how long it will take, we have no idea. Yogis, those who have given themselves to this as a basically their day job, known to go through these processes for years, those who have dedicated their entire life to the pursuit of that. So for us moderns, we should steadfast ourselves, fasten our seatbelt, and enjoy the ride because it might and most likely will take for the rest of our life to truly unravel all that. And in a way, this is more preferable because we will be spared to the casualties that are often associated to a more dramatic, intense, or as tradition referred to as violent process, when things done in a much quicker phase but requires certain supervision and certain safety valves. That takes us to the following questions, spontaneous movements. And now we're becoming to address, now we're coming closer to the actual somatic nature of the process. I have a question about spontaneous movements that can be quite intense. That happened when I sit quietly and still and just observe the energy and sensations in my body. I don't think they are kriyas in the traditional sense, as they don't appear like the spiritual kriyas I have seen at all. These are more like spontaneous, sudden discharge of energy. They seem quite repetitive and have been going on for years. I don't see any underlying pictures or memories that might be causing them. Question, I'm wondering if they are useful or helpful as unfolding or if they are just repetitive manifestations of energy that just serve as a temporary discharge. Okay, so let's uh, clarify right away because this is very, very important. In our language, in the work that we do, we call all these manifestations kriyas, irrespective of the form uh, they take or how they appear to uh, an eye or an ear. In other words, it doesn't have to look like anything that you have come across. It doesn't have to feel like anything that you might have experienced before. But what this really is all about is that with the greater pranic activity, let alone when Kundalini is fully awakened and the process of expansion and ascent begins there after without much delay, it is always accompanied by purging out of the system all these samskaras, these psychic impressions, because these psychic impressions act as this torf, as that what waxed the system, and it needs to be melted. So from the alchemical point of view, tremendous heat is required. Therefore, all early phases of Kundalini, whenever it is accompanied by that deep down the internal movement, is known as a hot, fiery phase, because Kundalini herself, as that term Bhairavi represents here, is the power of fire. It's literally that what here in the alchemy of yoga spoken of in terms of the power of the fire. It is located down there in Muladhara, where the sun is located in the chest, as the seat of the centrality of our awareness. And in the higher cortex is here, the seat of the moon. But we don't want to go there now. What we want to establish very clearly is that all these movements are facilitated by the awakened pranic currents now that are doing their work, doing their spring cleaning. How and what, we have no idea. How long it will take, we have no idea. Yogis, those who have given themselves to this as a, basically their day job, 
known to go through these processes for years, those who have dedicated their entire life to the pursuit of that. So for us moderns, we should steadfast ourselves, fasten our seatbelt, and enjoy the ride because it might and most likely will take for the rest of our life to truly unravel all that. And in a way, this is more preferable because we will be spared to the casualties that are often associated to a more dramatic, intense, or as tradition referred to as violent process, when things done in a much quicker phase, but requires certain supervision and certain safety valves. Whereas the gradual process could take us for years, and that, as I said, is more preferable. So do not worry that this has been going for years. Just give yourself to a well-proven methodology. Do attend programs on a regular basis. It's very important to sit in a group where this can be facilitated and where the facilitation brings about the possibility of quickening. What people go through in a manner of few days in properly, appropriately, appropriately created containers <laughs> would take years to accomplish alone at home. This is very well known. It's known as the effect of the group. It's known as the field because the coherence in the group is incomparably greater than our own, let's say, conductivity generated uh, when we are given to our individual practices.